Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. It is the truth, and we do receive it, written in our heart, written in our mind. Thank you for the revelation of it. We thank you for all that you're accomplishing in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated if you would. Tonight we're going to talk to you about the subject of going on into perfection. God it will have a perfected church that he is going to present unto himself a glorious church. We're going to talk about what the Word says about how we become perfect before God. It is the will of God for everybody to go on to perfection and to be perfect. We see, as we will be looking at Old Testament scriptures today and New Testament scriptures on Sunday, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. He was a just man, I mean he was accounted as righteous because of him doing what God said and obeying him. He was perfect in his generations. This is a word which you will see often in the Hebrew, a word which refers to being without blemish, perfect, upright, without spot, one who was upright. That's what he was in the Old Testament. It says he walked with God. When you walk with God and you walk in line with His Word, you will be righteous and you will become perfect before Him. We see the fact that in chapter 7, He makes this statement, The Lord said to Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee I have seen righteous before me in this generation. He's the only one that was saved. All the rest of them, they all died out. They all were destroyed in the flood. He was righteous. God is going to have a people that are righteous. Only the righteous are going to be saved, as we have seen. And those who are the righteous will be those that will be perfected, without blemish, upright, without spot. That's the church that Jesus is going to present to himself. So if you're going to become perfect, you're going to be righteous, you're going to be without blemish, you're going to be upright, without spot, you're going to be undefiled before the Lord. We see in Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, when Abram was ninety years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. He's telling him he is supposed to walk before him and he is to walk continually before him. This is a command, imperative mood, and it happens to be in the pale stem, which means he's to walk before him for himself continually walking before the Lord in line with his word. And he told him he used to be perfect. He used to be without blemish. He used to be upright. He used to be without spot. Same word. That's what God wants for us. And how is he going to be able to do that? It's because of the covenant relationship. He said, I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. God does the work in us through covenant relationship. As we obey what we are responsible to obey, obeying His commandments, walking in all His ways, then God will perform His work to bring us to the place of coming to the place of being perfected in the Lord. We see in verse 4, He says, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. God's covenant is how He performs His word in our life. As you, when you get born again, you receive Jesus' personal Lord and Savior, you come into covenant relationship with Him. And you now are to carry out the responsibilities of the covenant, the commands that He's given unto you. When you do so, then God's promises that He has given unto us, He will perform them in our life. We see that this word is referring to being without blemish. We see it used many times. And speaking about Jesus, of course, and speaking about the Lamb, Exodus chapter 12, verse 5, when they were to bring the Lamb, the Lamb was to be without blemish. This is what this word means. And we see that when Exodus chapter 29 and verse 1, when they were speaking about those who were going to be put in the position to minister in the priest's office, well, those ones, they were to take their offering without the ones that had without blemish, speaking of the fact that they were to be without blemish. 
This is the thing that thou shalt do unto them to hallow him, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock and two rams without blemish. They had to take them without blemish, and they had to come with all the things that were unleavened, pointing to the fact that you and I are to be without blemish and unleavened, which means that we are free from sin. Leaven is a type of sin. God wants us to understand that he is doing this work in you to accomplish this great work to bring you to the place of conquering all sin and to come to the place of to coming to perfection in the Lord. But we see in Numbers chapter 6, and it speaks of the Nazarite. The Nazarite fulfilling the days of his separation. Numbers 6.13, this is the law of the Nazarite. When the days of his separation, or his consecration, this means, are fulfilled, we are to be consecrated, dedicated, become holy unto the Lord. And they were to carry this out in this particular time. And when they had done that, and had finished this work, then they were to offer the offering of the Lord, one he lamb of the first year without blemish. The burnt offering, one he lamb of the first year without blemish for a sin offering. The one ram without blemish. Everything was to be done without blemish. And this is all pointing towards the fact to remember that you and I are the spiritual Nazarites that are to be without blemish before the Lord. We even see in Acts chapter 24, verse 5, when it speaks about Paul, they were coming against Paul. He said, we found this man a pestilent fellow, a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. This is the particular word Nazaraos, which means a Nazarite, one who is separated. That's what you and I are. We're the spiritual Nazarites, the ones that are separated unto God, that are going to walk in his ways, that are going to be consecrated, dedicated unto him, they're going to be the unleavened, the ones that are going to be without blemish unto the Lord. We also see, when it speaks of those in the Old Testament who were carrying out the feasts of the Lord, and in Numbers chapter 29 and verse 1, which is talking about the Feast of Trumpets, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a holy convocation. You should do no servile work. It's a day of blowing the trumpets unto you. This is the Feast of Trumpets. You shall offer a burnt offering for a sweet savor unto the Lord, one young bullock, one ram, seven lambs of the first year, without blemish. Well, this is all pointing to the fact that you and I are going to be an offering in righteousness unto the Lord as we are coming to the marriage of the Lamb which is the catching up of the church to meet the Lord in the air, and the rapture to bring us up for the marriage of the Lamb. And the ones that are going to go up in the rapture are going to be those that are going to be without blemish, because you are going to be an offering in righteousness unto Him. God is at work to bring you to perfection, to bring you to the place of being without blemish, to bring you to the place of being unleavened, having conquered sin in your life, and be holy, righteous before the Lord. What God does, he always does things in perfection, to bring forth perfection. We see over in Ezekiel, chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28, we look at verse 15. Here it's speaking about Lucifer, who was the leader of the praise and worship in heaven. And he says in verse 15, Thou wast perfect without blemish in thy ways without spot from the days that thou was created till iniquity this means unrighteousness was found in him god created him perfect god didn't bring sin it was the devil who was lucifer whose sin became unrighteous because of his jealousy over man being created in the image of god and he wanted to be like the most high he wasn't satisfied because of that he sinned, and of course the result was, because of his sin, he was cast as profane. As it says in verse 16, By the multitude of thy merchandise they filled the midst of thee with violence. Thou hast sinned, therefore I will cast thee as profane. Out of the mountain of God I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. 
and the angels that followed him, they were in the same boat. as They were in rebellion against what God was doing. God does not tolerate sin, and he doesn't want you to have any spots or blemishes. He wants you to come to the place of perfection in the Lord. We see in Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, we pick up in verse 9. He says, when thou, when thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, the physical land is a type of the spiritual land. When do we come into the spiritual land that God's given unto us? When we get born again. We come into relationship with him. You shall not learn to do after the abominations of those nations, because we're to be separate from the things of this world. We're not of this world. Remember, to seek the things above, not the things on the earth. And we are not to walk in the ways of the world whatsoever. We are through with the world. We are walking according to heaven's ways. Well, we come to verse 13, and he says to them, Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. You shall be perfect. You shall be without blemish. You shall be one who's going to be upright, one who's going to be holy before the Lord, of course, without spot, undefiled. That's what he wants for every single one of us. That is his purpose. How is this going to come to pass? It's because of covenant relationship that God is going to accomplish the work. You can do, you can do nothing yourself. But when you do what God's word says, God will be put in operation to release him to accomplish his work in your life. We see how we come to the place of perfection in the Old Testament, and this all applied to us in the New Testament. We understand it in the spiritual realities of his work in us. Deuteronomy 32, verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. Hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. God has given us his word. You need to hear the word of God because the word of God is bringing revelation of his ways he brings the knowledge of God. It shows us His commands. It shows us the way of the Lord that you and I are to walk after. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. As we hear the Word, and we study the Word, and we look at all the Scriptures, He's going to bring revelation of His true doctrine. The doctrine is always to be in line with the Word of God. Any doctrine that's contrary to the Word is a doctrine of the devil. There's a lot of them, unfortunately, in the body of Christ today. But as we study the Word and get the Word in us, we will get the true doctrine of the Lord. So we know the way of the Lord. And we see, verse 4, He is the rock, and His work is perfect. Because He is going to accomplish a great work in you. That work is going to bring you to the place of perfection. That work is going to cause you to grow up and to conquer and to overcome and to be fruitful and to come to the place of being a servant of the Lord and, and come to the place of carrying out the will of God for all that He wants for you in your life. His work is perfect. It will bring you to the place of perfection. All His ways are judgment. Or this is a word that's also translated justice. And it really, when you study this out, it, in this case, it would refer to that which is just or the, his rules of what is just and what is right, the governing rules of justice. And that would be his commandments, the New Testament law, in our sense of looking at it. He's a God of truth. He's the one, and the word, truth is the word. He carries out and is a performer of the word. And he's without unrighteousness. He never, never does anything contrary to unrighteousness. It's always in line with his word of righteousness. Righteous and upright. This is the word for righteous. This is the word yashar, which means to be upright is he. He is just. He is upright. He will perform this great work. One who has come to the place of being perfected is going to see this work, where he's going to come to the place of walking according to his ways, which are the New Testament laws. He's going to walk in the truth. He's going to have no unrighteousness in him, and he's going to walk in righteousness and uprightness because everything that God is going to do is always going to be in line with righteousness and uprightness. We see in Joshua chapter 24, 
verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity. This is the word, 8549, the word which is without blemish, the word perfection, talking about the same exact word. Young's brings it out correctly, in perfection. You're to fear the Lord and serve him in perfection and in truth. And you're to put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and Egypt and serve the Lord. Here it shows us you're going to have to have the fear of the Lord if you're going to come to perfection. And you are to serve him in perfection and truth. You can't serve him when you're walking in sin. You can't serve him when you're walking in compromise or the ways of the world or walking in the flesh. It's only going to be because you're going to serve him in perfection, being righteous and holy before him, and in truth, always in line with the word. And you're going to put away all the gods, all the idols, anything that is a source other than God. It has to be put away from you in your life, and you are to serve the Lord. And he goes on in verse 15, and it says, If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods of your fathers that served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That is the decision that you need to make as well. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will walk in holiness and perfection before the Lord. And we will have none of this idolatry or anything else as a source other than the Lord. We put him first place. So to be perfect is to have the fear of the Lord, to walk in truth, no idolatry, and serve Him. As you serve Him, you make the decision, I'm following the way of the Lord. That was for His house. Which means, if you're going to do this, you've got to be like Abraham. Abraham, he was told about this covenant, remember, that he, that he was to walk before the Lord and be perfect through the covenant. So what did he do? Is he got the knowledge of God, the ways of the Lord. He understood this is what he must do for his household. Genesis 18, 19, God said, For I know, I'm speaking of Abraham, Abraham, that he will command his children and his household after him. You need to command your children and your household after the way of the Lord, which is what you are to walk after. They shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice, to do what this means, righteousness, the word for righteousness. And this is the same word, which sometimes is translated just, justice, talking about the New Testament governing laws of the New Testament from a New Testament standpoint, the way you would apply it. So we're going to do righteousness, and we're going to do what is justice, his laws, walking after his commandments. And what, why is that important? that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Meaning, if you don't meet the conditions, can, is God going to bring the promises upon us? No. What do we need to do? We need to put the word of God first place. God deals with households. There was household salvation and there was household punishment in the word of God. He wants us to command our household, our children, to keep the way of the Lord, to do what is righteous, to do what is justice, in line with walking in line with his laws and commandments, then God can bring the things that he has spoken, his promises, to pass in our life. We see over in 2 Samuel, chapter 22. So we're talking about what we see in the word for you and I to come to the place of going on to perfection and becoming perfect before God. 2 Samuel 22. We pick up in verse 21. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands as he recompensed me. God wants us to be righteous, have fruits of righteousness as we do the word of righteousness. And he wants us to be clean. That means we've gotten rid of all the sin. We've gotten rid of all the filthiness. We cast out all the demons. We get everything, all the uncleanness out of us in our life. And how did he get to this place? For I have kept the ways of the Lord. That's what God expects of us. You're going to go on to perfection because you're going to keep the ways of the Lord. You're going to put the word of God first place in your life. And if not wickedly departed from my God, that tells you that really it's a wicked thing to depart from God's word and to do contrary to it, to walk in the ways of sin. He expects us to walk in his ways. You're in a covenant with him. 
He's brought you out of Satan's authority into a relationship with him who is a holy, righteous God. All his judgments were before me, and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. God wants you to put the word of God first place in your life, that you're going to walk in all of his ways. He said, I was also upright, the chance translated upright here, but again, it's this word 8549, which means perfect. I was also perfect before him. He walked in a perfect way. Remember, this is talking about David. Now, David messed up there with Bathsheba, but he confessed his sin, repented in turn. And that was, he, didn't, he didn't make any mistakes after that. He followed the way of the Lord. I was perfect before him, and I've kept myself from mine iniquity. God wants you to keep yourself from sin. That means you've got to crucify the flesh, because sin dwells in the flesh. You've got to keep yourself from walking contrary to the Word. You've got to keep yourself from walking in the ways of the world and not being a doer of the Word, giving place to the devil. Otherwise, you're never going to come to the place of perfection. He had to do this in his life. And he goes on and says, Therefore the Lord hath recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his eyesight. God will see you as without spot, without blemish, righteous, holy before the Lord. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. And with the upright, again, 8549, with the perfect man, wilt thou show thyself merciful. Perfect is a form of this word. Now, it's interesting, the word man here is not the normal word for man. You've got to look up all the words. It's the word gabor, if you notice it below. This word gabor is the word that means one who has become strong and mighty. So this is talking about with the perfect, strong and mighty man. That tells you something. Who's going to get to the place of being perfection? The ones that become strong and mighty. Because if you don't become strong and mighty, you won't overcome sin, you won't overcome the devil, you won't overcome the temptations, you won't overcome the things of this world. You've got to become strong and mighty to conquer and to walk in the ways of the Lord. You can only do it by God's power, and His Word produces strength and might and power in you. Notice, with the perfect, mighty, strong man, you will show yourself perfect, or essentially the same word. It's a form of this word it's talking about as Young's brings it out. That tells you something. God deals with you and actually manifests himself to you as you have allowed his work to come to pass. With the perfect, strong, mighty man, he's going to show himself per perfect towards you. Otherwise, he's going to manifest himself to you as you have seen the work in his life, in your life. As you're walking in righteousness, he will manifest to you according to what he sees. So as you've seen the work of God in your life, that's how he's going to deal with you. He's going to treat you as you are. This is why we need to see the mighty work of the Lord come forth in our life. We see down in verse 31, As for God, his way is perfect. There is no other way. You can't walk in your own ways. You can't walk in the flesh. You can't walk in the ways of the world. We must walk in His way. His way is perfect. And how do we know His way? It's the Word. The Word of the Lord is tried. It's been tested. It's passed the test, of course. His Word is the truth. He is a buckler, or this means a shield, to all them that are trusting in Him. If you are trusting in the Lord, it's going to be evident, not so because I have an attitude of trusting him. How do you show you trust in the Lord? You keep his word. You do what his word says. You obey his word. You carry out what the word of God says. And that's what he expects. This is someone who's ongoingly trusting because this is a participle active in the Hebrew, which is like, our pre like the present tense in the Greek, an ongoing action. That's why Young's translates it all those trusting continuous, ongoing basis. So, his way is perfect. It's the way of the word. And he will be a shield. That means he'll protect you to all those that are truly trusting in him on an ongoing basis. Which means 
you're going to walk in line with the word because you're going to come to the place of walking in perfection, which is what he wants. Verse 33, God is my strength and power. He maketh my way perfect. He's going to bring forth what he purposes. He'll cause your way to come to the place of perfection. This word maketh is in a hafil uh, um, stem, which is a causative word. When it says God is my strength, this is the word ma'uz. It's a different word. And this word means a, a place of protection, a, a refuge or a stronghold, a place. So ma'uz refers to God as my, my place of protection, having strength for protection. And, and this is the word actually that means strength. He's my protection, fortified place of protection, and he's my strength against the enemy. God will protect you. He'll strengthen you, and that's what it takes to overcome. And he makes... You will cause your way to come to the place of being perfect. Why? Because you're going to walk in line with the Word. You're going to put the Word of God first place. And you're going to be able to escape any attacks of the enemy. This is very interesting what it says in verse 34. He makes my feet like hinds feet and sets me upon my high places. We put the cursor over the word hinds feet. This is the Hebrew word, ayala. And it is the word for a doe. A doe is a female red deer. And if you've ever looked up about what, a, if you know anything about a doe, a female red deer has no antlers. Now, why is that important? Well, antlers are why they are able to protect themselves when something would attack them. That means the only way that they're going to be able to escape is not by having something to protect them, they could only do it because of their sure-footedness and their speed and their being able to do what God has set for them to escape any of anybody would come after them. The doe is the most sure-footed animal of all the mountain animals. They're able to make their way in high dangerous terrain. Uh, can place their back feet exactly where her front feet step so he's going to be sure-footed. It can run securely. It can evade predators. It can gallop fast and jump high fences in stride. If you have, I read all about this. It, climbs, it can climb up to high places and escape. Well, what does all this mean? This means that you are going to be able to run the race. And you're going to be able to conquer any predator that's after you, any devil or anything that's trying to take you down. And you're going to walk, you're, going to, you're not going to get off stride. You're not going to be able to to fall, or you're going to be sure-footed in everything that you do in the spirit, and you're going to be able to, like jumping high fences, you're going to leap over a wall, you know, you're going to be able to conquer anything that would come against you, and come to the high place where you evade the enemies. Otherwise, you're going to be walking in authority and power and victory. Notice, he sets me upon my high places. God wants you to rise above everything that would come against you. And he will do it. But it's because you come to the place of walking his word and come to perfection. You're not going to get that place if you're walking in sin, you're in compromise, you're walking the flesh, you're, you're on one minute and off the next minute. No, that's not going to work. We see over in Psalms 18. Psalms 18, verse 32. It is God that girdeth me, or encompasses me, and equips me, and clothes me with strength. And he make again, makes my way perfect. He is making your way, the way your way, perfect as you're walking in line with your word. Of course, you've got to have strength, remember. Strength comes from the word of God. And who makes your way so you walk perfect? It's God who does it. How? By putting the word of God first place in your life. And that is mandatory. There's another word that we'll be seeing a lot. It's a different word, but also refers to uh, being come to the place of perfection and gives a revelation of how we get to this place. 1 Kings chapter 8, down in verse 61. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes, to keep his commandments as at this day. We talk about your heart being perfect. This is one who comes to perfection and completion by 
keeping the covenant. You're keeping the covenant by doing what? Walking in all his statutes, keeping all his commandments. That's why your heart will be perfect. In the measure that you are walking in his word and after his ways and keeping the commandments of the Lord is the measure that your heart has come to the place of perfection. If you don't have the word first place in your life, your heart will not be perfect. Remember, when the word gets sown, where does it come? It's summoned into your heart so that as you hear and do it and walk in it, you'll produce fruit in your life. At the same time, who comes after the word immediately? The devil does. Why? He wants to get it out of your heart so it won't produce anything. And so the fact that you won't walk in perfection, you, you won't walk in perfection, you're an easy target for him and he can take you down for sure. Those ones that walk in perfection are the ones that are going to walk in the high places, remember. They're going to walk and they're going to see victory. They're going to be able to overcome because they're complete in keeping the covenant relationship. That means God's promises of the covenant are going to come to pass for you in your life. Your heart is to be perfect by keeping the statutes and keeping his commandments, the things of the word of God. We see over in 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. Thou Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart. The same word you'll see often. A perfect heart because remember, he's keeping the covenant. He's walking after the statutes and the ways of the word of God. With a perfect heart, and a willing mind, or this really means soul. The word gets written in your heart, and it also gets written in your mind, remember? And your heart needs to be perfect, but you're also your soul realm needs to be of a willing soul. You're ready to choose the right thing. You're thinking correctly, so you'll think on what God wants, and you're going to govern the soulish realm so you don't give place to the enemy. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, as here to do, he'll be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Just like scriptures we saw in the past about those people that, you know, didn't walk in the way of the Lord. They, they aren't making it, are they? You forsake him, you will be cast off forever. That's why we need to put his word first place and walk in the ways of the Lord. We see over in 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 4. If thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked in integrity. Now this is a little different word. This is a word that refers to a completeness. Again, because of walking in line with the covenant. Integrity because of, com of the completeness because you're walking in line with the word. Integrity of heart in uprightness to do according to all that I've commanded and will keep my statutes and my judgments. If you will do this, then I'll establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel, otherwise the rule and the reign of God will be in operation. Well, the same is true for us. If you will walk in line with the word of God, the integrity, completeness of heart, uprightness, doing what he commands, keeping his statutes, walking in the ways of the Lord, then you will come to the place of being able to rule and reign over all of your enemies as well. First Chronicles 29, verse 19. David's prayer for Solomon was this. Give unto Solomon, my son, a perfect heart. This again is the heart of the 8003, which is the heart that's complete and right and of perfection by keeping covenant relationship with him, by doing the word, keeping his statutes, remember? As he says, you can see why it's so, to keep thy, it actually explains it here, to keep the commandments, thy testimonies, thy statutes, and to do all these things, and to build the palace for the which I've made provision. Otherwise, he'd obey him and he'd carry out everything. A perfect heart is shown in your obedience. Little obedience, you don't have a perfect heart. You've got to walk and keep his commandments. It's all shown by your works, by your fruit, by, your, by what you're doing to do all these things. That shows a perfect heart. Well, did Solomon do this all the days of his life? No. Solomon got off track. 1 Kings chapter 11. He loved many strange women. 
and he was with all these ites who they were forbidden to be and be with. Verse 4, came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. He got an idolatry. His heart was not perfect. It was not in perfection complete according to the covenant of keeping the commandments and walking in his statutes whatsoever with the Lord his God as was his heart of his David his father. He failed. He made a big mistake. You cannot let yourself turn away from the word of God or your heart will not be perfect and be right before the Lord. 1 Kings chapter 15. In the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, reigned Abijam. He began, Abijam began to reign over Judah. And in verse 3, notice what it says. He walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as the heart of David his father. Here he walked in the sins of his father. His heart was not perfect because he didn't put the word of God first place. Now some people say, well, I have all these problems in my life because I got all these inherited generational curses that have come down the line because of the sins of the forefathers. Well, that's right. We all do. But there's no excuse for that. You can conquer everything. You can conquer everything because he's given you dominion over all the demons in the New Testament. You can cast them out. And you can also put the word of God first place and walk in line with it and do his commandments carry out his word, overcome all areas of sin. These guys in the Old Testament walked in righteousness and, and, uh, and cleanness before God. They got clean before him and they walked uprightly before him Perf with a perfect heart. We can certainly do it as well. God wants us to conquer. That means you need to deal with all of the inherited generational things that have come into you. You're going to have to confess the sins. You're going to have to recognize these inherited generational curses and these sins have come down the line that will try to, a lot of them you may have been living with in the same way throughout your life until you got born again. That's just your lifestyle. It's the way you were. You say, well, I thought that's the way I always was. I always was kind of an angry person or I was always kind of a stubborn person or always kind of a fearful person or always kind of timid or passive or always kind of, a, you know, I had a lot of lust problems as I was growing up and so forth and these are all sins of the forefathers. And those aren't excuses. That helps you to recognize what's there so you know what to deal with and get in the Word and correct those problems and cast out those spirits and get set free. God wants us to conquer. You must conquer for your heart to be perfect. If you walk in those sins, your heart will not be perfect before the Lord. Second Chronicles chapter 15. The Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. He went out to meet Asa. And he said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you be with him. Notice, that's the truth. <laughs> if you don't walk with him, he's not going to be with you. And if you seek him, he'll be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. That shows you. God has always treated someone how you treat him. In the New Testament, same thing. You draw nigh to him, he draws nigh to you. You, know, you reject him, he's going to reject you. You're ashamed to him, it'll be ashamed to you. He always treats us, regardless of whether it's a New Testament or Old Testament, how you treat God. And so we see that the, in verse 3, for a long season, Israel had been without the true God, without a teaching priest and without law. Boy, you're in trouble. If you don't have the true God, if you don't have the teaching of the Word of God, you don't have the, the law which in the New Testament age would be the New Testament commandments and know the law of Christ so you can walk after the way of the Lord. They were walking after all kinds of other things. They were just like people walk after the ways of the world. If they're not taught the word of God, they're just walking in the flesh, doing whatever they want. Got their idols of all kinds with money, possessions, you know, all types of things that they want to do. What a mistake. When they were in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. Those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. Great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of all these different countries. It was terrible. The place was a mess because they didn't have the truth. Nation was destroyed of nation, city of city. God did vex them with all adversity. So he took heart to what he said. He said, Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. He needed to do a right work before God. 
So what did he do? Asa heard these words, the prophecy of Oded the prophet. He took courage, put away. He started getting rid of all this evil stuff. When you hear the word of God, God wants you to get rid of all the evil stuff out of your life. He put away all the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin, out of the cities which he'd taken from Mount Ephraim, and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. He started getting rid of the evil and started restoring all the things of God. That is what God wants for you in your life. We come down to verse 12. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart, with all their soul. That's what God wants for you. He wants you to seek him with all your heart, all your soul, all your being. Put him first place. And look what else he said. Whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. You don't seek him, you die. <laughs> that was pretty straightforward. And these guys all responded. Well, we come to verse 15. All Judah rejoiced at the oath. They'd sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. God wants you to seek him with your whole desire. And he was found to them. And the Lord gave them rest round about. They were, had rest from their enemies. If you seek God with your whole desire and put his word first place and do what he says, he's going to eliminate your enemies. Remember, he got rid of all the bad stuff, started getting rid of everything. You have rest. You have peace. Instead of having all these enemies working against you. Parallel to this, is over in 1 Kings. And this guy, he came to the place of not compromising. That's where you have to come to as well. You've got to deal with everything. 1 Kings 15, 11. Asa did that which was right in the, sight of, in the eyes of the Lord as David his father. God wants you to do what is right in the sight of the Lord. That means you're putting the word first place. You're only speaking the word, you're thinking the word, you're doing the word, you're separating yourself from that which is not in line with the word. He took away the sodomites out of the land. <laughs> That's what we need. Somebody would take the sodomites and get rid of them. And removed all the idols that his father had made. All the idols have to go. And look what else he did. And also, Makah, his mother, even her, he removed from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove, and Asa destroyed her idol and burned it by the brook Kidron. He didn't compromise for his family. You're not going to be queen anymore. You're an idol worshiper. Took her idol away. You get somebody in your family has got an idol, you better take it away from them and destroy it. You can't let that continue on. And don't let them operate in that any longer. <laughs> destroyed the idol. She got removed. Hey, that's, that's somebody who's going to do what's right. <laughs> he, did, he was moved on to dealing with things in his household to get things right. <clears throat> the high places were not removed. He didn't get everything done. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect with the Lord all his days. It was perfect because he did the things that God wanted. And obviously he was very zealous at getting rid of all the bad stuff and doing the right things and eliminating things. He wouldn't compromise for his family. Mother, no way are you going to be having your idol. Didn't matter who it was. That's what God wants for us. We go back over to Second Chronicles 15. As we said, this is parallel with this, where here's about he removed her from being the queen. The high places weren't taken away, and nevertheless the heart of Asa was perfect all his days, it says, and verse 19, there was no more war, no more war, because he did what was necessary. He came to, his heart was perfect. When your heart's perfect and you do the work of getting rid of all the evil and you walk in line with the word and start correcting everything in your life and you're walking in perfection, you're going to have peace. The enemies are going to be put underfoot. You're going to be free. You're going to be walking in victory. And that's exactly what happened. Unfortunately, see, in trusting the Lord, you can't just trust the Lord for a while and then once you've come to a certain place, just kind of not continue in the ways of the Lord. You can't do that. Second Chronicles 16, verse 1. In the sixth and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa, Basha the king of Israel came up against Judah and built Ramah into the tent that he might let none go out or come in to Asa the king of Judah. So here's this enemy, Basha the king of Israel, coming against him. 
Well, God had already done a work of delivering him in the past because he trusted him. So what's he do? He goes out with his, all his silver and gold. He sends it to Ben-Hadon, the king of Syria, to get somebody else to fight his battle against him. He says, there's a league between me and you. There was between my father and thy father. Behold, I've sent thee silver and gold. Bro, break the league with Basha, the king of Israel, that he made apart from me. Deal with this thing. Now, wait a minute. Now he's looking to an evil king to do this instead of looking to the Lord. That was a big mistake, and so he got rid of the problem. But verse 7. At that time, Hanani the seer came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. He didn't kill him off and get rid of him. Were not the Ethiopians and Lubans a huge host with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hand. There were a million of them. And he destroyed the whole, God destroyed the whole group because he relied on the Lord. This time he didn't rely on the Lord. He did the wrong thing. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of who? Of them whose heart is perfect towards him. When your heart's perfect towards God, because you're walking in all the ways of the Lord, you're keeping his commandments, keeping his statutes, you're overcoming, God's going to show himself strong on your behalf. Did he do that? No. He decided he's going to do it another way. Don't make that mistake. You put God as first place in your life and your total source, and you do what he says, and you continue to do what he says, and just don't decide, well, I'm not going to, not going to trust the Lord this time. I'm going to do it in my own strength some other way. <laughs> you're in trouble. You will not get anywhere. In fact, now you're going to, the enemy, enemies are going to come after you. He said, herein thou hast done foolishly. Henceforth, you shall have wars. Uh, well, if the guy was smart, he would have responded properly and said, okay, I, can, I blew it. I confess my sin. I am sorry. Forgive me. But he was not a smart guy at this point. He got mad. He was wroth with a seer, put him in a prison house, rejected the word of God. If God comes to correct you and you reject the word of God, you're in trouble. You may think you're going to get rid of your enemy that's come against you. <laughs> he put him in prison for a while and thought that that was going to solve his whole problem. No. That was the 36th year. And it may seem like everything was okay for a couple years, but it's going to catch up with you. In the Asa, in the third and ninth year of his reign, was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. Here God had done all these things, and now he first basically forsook the Lord, went off another direction. See, once you go off another direction and your heart's not right before God, and you let these devils come into you, and you start relying on something else, you're not going to have the strength. You're not going to have God operate in your life. And he didn't. So now, he's not even seeking to the Lord. He's seeking to the physicians. He's going to do it, you know, in the, another way. He's not right with the Lord yet. He slept with his father, died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. He had a two-year-long disease of torment until he was finished. You and I cannot compromise. We must rely on the Lord to have a perfect heart. And when you have had one... Don't ever backslide and turn away from it and say, well, I'll, I'll try it another way this time. And reject the Lord who brought you victory. That's another thing also. You better give testimony to the things that God has done. God has done things for you. You need to testify it, not just say, well, I'm just going to forget about that. I don't want anybody to know I had that problem. <laughs> That's a denial of the Lord. You, you denied the Lord, essentially, who had given him the victory over the Ethiopians and the Lubans. You deny the Lord, you're in trouble. And that's what he did, and it cost him. We've got to have a perfect heart before God. 2 Kings, chapter 20, talking about Hezekiah. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. The prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. He turned his face to the wall, prayed unto the Lord, and look what he said to him. I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth. 
I got the walk. I got the track record. I've been walking before you according to the word. And with a perfect heart. So this guy had the walk and he had the perfect heart. When you have the walk and you have a perfect heart, God will take notice. And I have done that which is good in thy sight. Otherwise, I've been walking in your ways. That's why you'll be able to see God bring forth a promise for you and to turn things around. He wept sore. It came to pass for Isaiah was gone out in the middle court, the word of the Lord came into him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I've heard thy prayer, I've seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. The guy got healed. On the third day you'll go up to the house, and I'll add 15 years unto thee, and I'll deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. I'll defend this city for mine sake and for my servant David's sake. He got 15 more years, and he got these guys getting delivered out of the enemies. All because he had a perfect heart and he was walking in the ways of the Lord. That's what God wants for you and me. God will show himself strong, remember, on the half, behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him. We see another place in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 38. 1 Chronicles 12, 38. All these men of war, they've been trained up, they knew how to fight, that could keep rank. Rank means the battle line. They stepped, they stayed in the battle. They stayed on, they were active in the fight. Came with a perfect heart to Hebron. These guys that were, they were involved in what they were supposed to do. They were the warriors. They were the men of war and they weren't on the sidelines. They were keeping the battle. They had a perfect heart to make David king over Israel and all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. These people had revelation. They were in tune with what was right. Their heart was perfect before the Lord and they know who, who was the one who was the king. And they were walking and keeping rank in the battle and conquering and overcoming. They had a perfect heart. When you're in the flow of what God has, you'll have a perfect heart. When you are carrying out the, what his will is, and remember, he's brought us into not just being a holy priest, but a royal priest to rule and to reign. You are, to, you are in the kingdom and you are to use the weapons of warfare to conquer and to fight the good fight of faith, and you are to war good warfare. You're a soldier in the army of the Lord. That's why it says they, you, you can't have yourself entangled with the affairs of this life. You're a soldier in the army. You need to be in, these guys were keeping rank. Are you keeping rank as a soldier in the army? Are you in the fight? Are you in the warfare? Are you engaging in the battle with a perfect heart? You'll have true revelation, and you will see that you will be ruling and reigning and walking in the ways of the Lord. That's what God wants. We see in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 9, the people rejoiced, for they offered willingly, because the, the, with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. This is where they were bringing all the different things to help in the building. They were offering their offerings. Notice, they had a perfect heart in offering willingly. People that don't offer willingly don't have a perfect heart. People that bring an offering because they ought to or should or have to, or I guess I better do it, or they're not consistent and faithful in it, they don't have a perfect heart at all. You, gotta, you should have a perfect heart. You should be ready and willing and always excited and wanting to bring what tithes or offerings or whatever it might be that God wants for you to do. They've offered it willingly. That shows a perfect heart. Everything you do, it's got to be willingly. You shouldn't have, God shouldn't have to be after you to get you to do something. You should be always wanting to do something. If you don't have a willingness on things, there's a problem. If you're doing things begrudgingly, there's definitely a problem in your life. It needs to be corrected for sure. Second Chronicles, chapter 19, verse 9. He charged them, saying, This shall you do in the fear of the Lord faithfully and with a perfect heart. Whatever you do, he wants you to have the fear of the Lord, so you always do things right before him. You'll be faithful with a perfect heart. Faithful, someone you can count on, someone you can trust. You know they're going to get it done. 
then I could be on one minute and I was counting on you and, well, I'm sorry, I'm not here today or, or I don't want to today or, you know, you're, you're not, you're not can't, people can't trust you and know that you're going to be able to accomplish something when they're expecting you to because you had said that you'd do it. Now, we need to be faithful. Faithful is someone who's trustworthy, someone you know. Can God trust you to do all the things he wants you to do, the things he says in his word? You do everything faithfully in the fear of the Lord with a perfect heart. That will show forth a perfect heart. It's also possible to do things without a perfect heart, as we see. Well, I'm doing things, but you're not doing them with a the right heart attitude. 2 Corinthians 25, verse 1. Amaziah was 25 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. It says, He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. That means you do it because you, I know I should. I know I ought to. I know they want me to do such and such. Or he wants me to do this, or she wants me to do this, or, you know. But you don't have a perfect heart. You can easily be tossed aside into doing wrong things if you don't have a heart that's set as a perfect heart in doing things right. That's a big mistake. Well, it came to pass when the kingdom was established to him that he slew his servants that had killed the king of his father. Was that someone who was doing something right? He didn't have a perfect heart. His heart wasn't right whatsoever. And this guy, because his heart wasn't right, he could get into sin real easily. Just like Solomon's heart could not have been right for him to have gotten into that sin. No way. Even after he had all this revelation, God appeared to him twice. He wrote a thousand five songs and all the Proverbs. His heart could not have been right consistently for him to have fallen off. Look at what it says here in 2 Chronicles 25, 14. came to pass Amaziah was come from the daughter of the Edomites that he brought the gods of the children of Seir and set them up to be his gods and bowed down himself from them and burned incense unto them. Here he's now in idolatry, just like, just like what happened to Solomon. Wherefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah and sent unto him a prophet and said to him, Why hast thou sought after gods of the people which could not deliver their own people out of thine hand? <laughs> it's all a bunch of false stuff. Well, Joash the king of Israel took Amaziah the king of Judah, the son of Joash, brought him to Jerusalem and break down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate. They broke the whole place up, plundered him because of his idolatry. It was a judgment that came upon him. God wants to make sure you do things with a perfect heart. One who has a perfect heart is established in hearing and doing the word and walking uprightly with a right attitude on everything, a perfect heart towards God. You won't turn. But if your heart's not perfect, you can be an easy candidate to fall away and not be consistent, which is what happened here. We see over in Job, Job 1.1, there's a man in the land of us, us whose name was Job, the man was perfect, and upright, and one that feared God. This is a different word we see, another one, uh, for, similar to the one, other ones, but perfect. Upright, and one that feared God, and eschewed, which means he turned aside from evil. So someone that's going to be perfect will be upright. He will have the fear of the Lord, and he will turn away from evil. He won't compromise and fall into evil. If you're falling into evil, your heart's not perfect. And you certainly can't have the fear of God if you're falling into evil because if you had the fear of God, you know what's going to happen and you start giving place to falling into evil, giving place to the devil. You're going to have all kind of problem. In Job chapter 8, verse 20, Behold, God will not cast away or reject, this means, the main word means reject, a perfect man. He's not going to cast away a perfect man. Oh, he's not going to reject him. Instead, he's going to be receiving him. He's going to be coming to their aid. Remember, he'll show himself strong on those heart, whose heart is perfect towards him. So if you're walking in perfection, God is never going to reject you. He is always going to be there to manifest himself to accomplish the things that he purposes. At the same time, you'll go through persecution because of walking in perfection and that you're going to take a stand for what's right, and you're not going to compromise. 
Job 12, 4. I am as one mocked of his neighbor. Why was he mocking him? Who called upon God and he answered him. The just upright man is laughed us to scorn. And this is talking about the just, the righteous, perfect man. It's the word for perfection. The perfect righteous one. He laughed at him. He's mocking at him. Well, you'd be mocked. You'll be laughed at. Remember Noah? He was laughed at. Amen. What are you doing here building this thing? You know, the ark. You'll be laughed at because of taking a stand for what is right, but you'll be walking in the ways of the Lord. You'll be rewarded by the Lord. That's for sure. Another thing that we want to get is the fact that we want to get the Word of God in us to come to the place of perfection. And how are we going to do that? Through the Word. And who's the source? God is the source. Job 36, 4, For truly my words shall not be false. He that's perfect in knowledge is with thee. Perfect in knowledge. That's what God wants. He wants us perfect in knowledge. God's the perfect in knowledge one. As you get the knowledge of God, it'll bring you to the place of being perfect in knowledge as well. As you receive the word of God. The word of God is the truth. You need to get his knowledge and reject all this other knowledge. You don't need the worldly knowledge outside of just being able to function in things. You want the knowledge of God that you are going to walk by. Psalms 15. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle and who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Well, that's the one that's going to make it with the Lord, isn't it? He that walketh perfectly. It says uprightly, but it's the same word, 18, 85, 49, perfectly. And this is the one who is walking perfectly. Because again, this is a participle active in the mood. This is why trans Young's translates it, who is walking perfectly. That's what the word means. And is working righteousness. And speaking the truth in his heart. I mean, that's a guy. He's, got, he's speaking the right words. He's working righteousness. He's walking up perfectly before the Lord without spot. That's what God wants for you. He'll accomplish this, remember, when you put the word first place in your life and you do the things that he says. He that backbiteth not with his tongue or doeth evil to his neighbor or take up the reproach against his neighbor. So you're walking in love towards every person. God wants you and I to walk in perfection. Psalms 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. What will it do? The working of the word in you will convert the soul. It'll turn back your soul so you make the right choices, so you think properly, so you will have the mindset of the Lord. The testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. So God will convert your soul. It'll restore it, get it right. And that's where the battleground is, remember. The devil tries to work at your will to get you to make wrong choices. Try to get you to think wrong things in your mind, compromise and respond to feelings and you know he works he's got to work through the soul realm to get you to fall into his traps to choose the wrong thing and sin oh the law of the lord is perfect you put the word of god first place it will do a job on your soul your soul needs to get restored converted changed it needs to come in line with the truth psalms 37 verse 37 Mark the perfect man. That means observe, give heed to the perfect man. And behold the upright. This is the guy that's upright. For the end of that man is peace. This is the word shalom. I'm not just talking about peace of mind. This is the word that means completeness, soundness, welfare. It means health. It means prosperity. It's quiet and peace, contentment, peace from war. We're talking about total victory in your life. That's what God wants. That's what Shalom is. Mark the perfect man and, and the guy who's upright. The end result of that man is he is going to be totally victorious in everything that he does. Psalms 84. Verse 11. 
The Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will we withhold from who? Them that walk or are walking in perfection. 85.49. It's the word for perfection that we've seen before. Otherwise, if you're walking in perfection, he's not going to withhold anything back because you're walking perfectly, uprightly before him, in line with his word, in line with his commandments, obeying his statutes, hearkening to his word, walking in righteousness, doing all these things. That is what he wants. And again, this walk here is it's a participle active again, showing the fact that you have a consist you're walking consistently. It's not like, oh, I, I walked okay last week, you know, <laughs> so. And I'm, today I'm way off track. You're not, you don't, this doesn't mean you're going to get this promise. It's a consistency. You're a consistent walking up in perfection before the Lord. Look at Psalms uh, 101. He wants things right in your house as well. Psalms 101, verse 2. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. 8549, the number again, perfection. O oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. You need a perfect heart in your house. Well, I walk with a perfect heart around everybody else because I don't want them to see that maybe some problems with my life. But I'm at home, <laughs> I can just be myself. Well, you should be the same all the time. You shouldn't all of a sudden become the bear or be the guy that's, you know, lazy and slothful and, you know, and all these other evil things. No. Within your house with a perfect heart. What's going to be evidence of that? I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. <laughs> None of that garbage out there on the TV and the media and all this stuff. We're not about to let that come into our eyes. We're not going to watch those filthy movies or any of those things. I hate the work of them that turn aside. Do you hate it? That's the fear of the Lord. You hate evil. It shall not cleave to me. I'm not letting that get a hold of me. Do you have that kind of a stand? That's the way it must be. If you're going to walk right before God. A froward heart shall depart from me. I'm not going to have any perverse heart. I will not know a wicked person. That's not who I'm going to be in fellowship with. I'm going to walk in the ways of the Lord, see. Whoso privily slanders neighbor will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart will I not suffer. They're going to be in trouble. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. That's what you and I are to be. That they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Many people want to serve the Lord, but if you don't walk in a perfect way, you're not a candidate to serve him, according to God's word. You might be doing it, but you're doing it contrary to what he says. You've got to have gotten things in order if you're going to be a servant of the Lord. His eyes are on the faithful of the land. He wants you to be faithful in doing things. Remember, the call of the chosen, the faithful. That's what he wants you to be. That they may dwell with me. The faithful dwell with them. Not the guy that you can't count on. You know, I mean, think about it. Somebody you can't count on them, you're not going to be, I'm not going to rely on that person. <laughs> forget, the, forget it. They're not going to be dwelling with me. No. The guy that walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Psalms 26. Judge me, O Lord, for I've walked in my integrity. I've walked in my completeness. There's a little bit different word. I've trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Well, I'm walking in my completeness, which really is you come to the place of perfection and integrity in the Lord. So you won't slide. Examine me, O Lord. Prove me. Try my reins. That's the soulish realm, your so emotions and soulish realm, and my heart. You're not afraid for God to examine you and, tra and, tra and to, to, to try you and test you <coughs> because you're walking in perfection. <coughs> You've got the track record. You know, I'm, I'm walking in my integrity. I'm not sliding whatsoever. Can you give that testimony? If not, you've got some work to do. For thy loving kindness before thine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth, walking habitually in the truth. This is the way I walk in everything. I've not sat with vain persons. You will I go with the dissemblers, those people that are, 
that are not the real deal, that are secret persons, hot, conceal and hide things, you know, and they're not right for the Lord. No way. I've hated the congregation, the evildoers. I don't get around those kind of people. And I'm not going to sit with the wicked. I won't sit with the wicked. I'm, I'm not going to have fellowship with people that aren't right whatsoever. In fact, we come down to verse 8, and he says, Lord, I've loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. We love to come to church and praise and worship God and hear the word of God, be in fellowship one with another, as the Bible says. That is what we should have, that kind of attitude we should have. As for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. God's mercy will come. Why? Because you've met the conditions and you will see God's blessings that will come upon you in your life. Proverbs, chapter 20, down in verse 7. The just man, the righteous man, walks in his integrity, completeness. His children are blessed after him. Otherwise, again, he's got the walk. When you're walking in the way of the Word of God, and this is your lifestyle, it says the children be blessed after him. Of course, that's implying that the children are following him, the word of God. You know, they're going to have to be they should be following the things that they see that you're walking after. Proverbs twenty-eight, verse six. Better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. Your walk is what's important. It's not what you have. It's what you're walking after, and uprightness, which is, again, this word integrity and completeness that he wants. Over in Psalms 119, Psalms 119, Blessed are the undefiled, this is 8549, which is the perfect. Blessed are the perfect in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Who's perfect? The guy that walks in the law of the Lord, that are walking consistently in the law of the Lord. Participle active. Your consistent walk shows where you are in God. What kind of a consistent walk do you have? We sh if we aren't on all the time, there is a problem. Verse 80. Let thy heart be perfect. It says sound, but it's the same word, 8549. Young's is, this is why Young's is so good. He does real pretty well almost all the time on consistent translation of the words. My heart is perfect in thy statutes that I be not ashamed. Otherwise, he's walking in line with the, God's laws and statutes, things that he's put forth in his word. Notice, when you're doing that, then you won't be ashamed. But you will be ashamed if you're not, because you're not walking in the way of the Lord, and you're not having the fruit that God wants. At the same time, people will come against you. But you've got to take a stand. You've got to take a stand in your household. You've got to take a stand in your job. You've got to take a stand wherever you are. Amos 5.10, they hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh perfectly. 85.49, the guy who's speaking uprightly or perfectly, uh, people won't like it. But you need to speak it because they need to hear truth. They need to hear the word of God, the things that you speak. That's what God wants. He wants us to speak the right things. If you and I will do these right things, then God will move mightily in our life. And he will bring forth great results. We see in, in Second Chronicles, and we've seen a lot of the results already. Second Chronicles 8.16 All the work of Solomon was prepared unto the day of the foundation of the house of the Lord until it was finished. So the house of the Lord was perfected completed. Well, think of it. The Solomon's temple, remember, is a type of the church, the church being built in the New Testament. And here, 
It was prepared on the day of the foundation of the house of the Lord. And the house is to be laid in your, the foundation is to be laid in your life because you're a consistent hearer and doer of the word. Until it gets finished, the work's to be finished in you as you are working out your own salvation, always obeying. And here he's saying, the house of the Lord was perfected. It came to perfection. That's what's to happen in you and me. As you and I walk in the ways of the Lord and put his word first place, then we are going to see this great work be accomplished in us and the building of the house of the Lord in us perfected. Psalms 37, verse 18. The Lord knoweth the days of the perfect. Young's correctly translates it consistently, number 8549 as we see. And their inheritance shall be forever. That means they're going to get the inheritance because they've met the conditions. God knows the days of the perfect. They're going to get the inheritance. The other guys, they won't get the inheritance. It's not going to happen for them. We see in Psalms 37, verse 37, Mark the perfect man, behold the upright, and the man is peace. We already saw this. He's going to get the full victory that is going to come forth. Psalms 41 Verse 12, As for me, thou upholdest me in mine integrity and settest me before thy face forever. You're going to be with God. If you're going to be set before his face forever, that means you're going to be before God. Because why? Because of your integrity, your completeness, the work of God being accomplished in your life. And you see this happen. Proverbs 2, verse 7 is where Talking about other results. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He's a buckler, a shield to all those who are walking uprightly in integrity. He will be a shield and he will be a protector for you. Proverbs 2.21 For the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it. That's interesting. The upright, that are walking upright, they're going to dwell in the land and the promises, but what's going to make sure you remain in it? Because you could fall away from it, remember, or leave it. The perfect. The ones that come to perfection, they're established in everything. They'll remain in it. They are never going to be leaving it because they are walking in perfection of the Lord. That is what he wants for you and me. Proverbs 10, verse 9. He that walketh uprightly or integrity and completeness, walks surely. He'll be secure, he'll be safe, he'll be protected. But he that's perverting, perverts his ways, uh, he'll be known and the enemies will be able to get him. He'll have all kinds of problems. Proverbs 10, 29. The way of the Lord is strength, ma'uz, a fortified place of protection. To who? The ones that have integrity and completeness. He'll be protected. But destruction will be to the workers of iniquity. People that walk in sin, they will see destruction. They may think they're getting away with it right now because it didn't happen that very moment. No, the seeds are already there. Remember, whatever a man sows, he's going to reap. It's going to happen. You sow to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. It will happen in your life. You will not get away with it. Proverbs 11, verse 5. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way. That tells you something. But the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. That means the righteousness of the perfect, you're walking in perfection, it's going to direct your way. God's going to direct your way. He's going to show you the right way to go. And you're going to be led in the straight, the, the direct, the right way, the straight way, the, the way that he would lead you and guide you. We also see in Proverbs 13, verse 6, Righteousness keeps him that is upright or integrity and complete in the way. It'll keep you in that place. But wickedness overthrows the sinner, and he's going to have a fall. He's not going to get away with it whatsoever. Proverbs 28, verse 10. Whoso causes the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit. He's in trouble. But the upright, the perfect, shall have good things in 
possession, or this means to be able to possess the inheritance that belongs to you, to acquire the, the, that which belongs to you, which would be your inherited promises. As Young's brings out, the perfect do inherit the good, and they're going to get the possession of the inheritance. It belongs to them. And one last scripture here in verse 18. Whoso walketh perfectly, 84, 5, 85, 49 is the number, the one who's walking perfectly shall be saved. And this is the word yasha, which means to be delivered, to be liberated, to be victorious, total victory. Otherwise, your walk is going to determine whether you get the victory or not. People say, well, if I just get to do the right thing, everything will be fine. It doesn't matter about all the other things. No, it's the whole package, isn't it? You've heard me say it and say it and say it and say it around here. It's the whole package. You think you're just going to put, you know, do one little right thing and everything's going to be great, you know, or you're going to get your healing, your deliverance, whatever, and you're not walking right consistently. It's not going to happen. God's looking at the whole package. He's looking at the people that are going to walk perfectly before the Lord. And that is what he expects for you and me. Participle active, consistent. Your track record consistently is the key. What are you doing day in and day out? What are you walking consistently? What is your lifestyle? What is your spiritual track record? That is the key. And that's what God wants. Everybody is to come to the place of being per perfect, without blemish, upright, without spot, undefiled, integrity of heart, complete in keeping the covenant promises, uh, the, the, the commandments, walking after the statutes, being a doer of the word, having the fear of the Lord before you, all these things that we have talked about. That, these are all important principles that are going to show how you're going to come to the place of being perfect before the Lord. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Word of God in the Old Testament that brings revelation of how to be perfect before God. These ones were perfect because they did what the Word said. They walked after the commandments. They were obedient. They obeyed the statutes of the Lord. They had the fear of God before them. They had righteousness and cleanness. They had a perfect heart. I thank you that I will walk consistently in perfection. My walk consistently, my spiritual track record, my lifestyle shows really what I am. I thank you, Lord. I'm putting the word first place. I'm walking in your ways. Everywhere, including my house, I will walk in perfection in my house all by myself when no one's around. I will correct every problem in my life. I thank you that I am going on into perfection. As I am a doer of this word, I will be perfect before God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. We've seen some tremendous principles and important things of what God will accomplish for you in your life as you're doing the work. God does the work, remember. And we're going to talk more on this and when we look at the New Testament scriptures of all the things on Sunday morning. Father, we thank you for all you brought forth. Thank you that we understand we're to be perfect before you and we will be doers of this word and we will see the perfection of the Lord be accomplished in our life through your work being done. We praise you for accomplishing this because we are hearers and doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.